Hey, welcome to the lab. So in this experiment, I have created a lab, a grow lab, for um, uh, experiments on the plants, because there's this big plant update that occurred, and uh, it's not as... It's, it's not especially straightforward how everything works. So I wanted to create uh, a test bed where I can control all of the uh, variables. And uh, this is what I come up with. And as I was creating this, I found uh, one particular variable that is uh, fairly easy to control. Uh, let's just get rid of all of these samples um, because we're going to do the sample over again. But because we're going to start from scratch. Uh, this is just uh, my little disposable transport tube that goes into the ground and... Um, then they just disappear because they fall off the map. But let's take a tour of the lab first. So uh, this space is probably going to grow quite a bit um, as I change experiments. Plus there may be more than just uh, one lab um, once I, I truly get going. But this is how it stands now. It's just a, uh, what is it, a 6x6 six six room here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 by 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, five. Yeah, 6x5 room, too high, doesn't have to be too high, and I will uh, explain why I am using um, these hydroponic stations, because these hydroponic stations have a very special feature in them that Harvey does not. Uh, I also tried using the, um, uh, the automated station that's been removed, uh, you know, AU. Where is it? There, here. This guy right here. Now, this guy kind of works, kind of doesn't work. It won't, it won't harvest, but the plants will grow in it. Um, I would like to see this brought back uh, to grow individual plants, uh, especially if it has all of its features in it, all of its um, data features in it, as well as the... Uh, Hyd uh, hydroponic stations feature and we'll get to that in a minute but this is uh, the uh, control station right here not the control station but the experiment station they're all experiments there's no there's no control uh, group uh, because this is a video game and we're not going to do that um, and it is uh, managed by this uh, one chip here. Right now we have a negative one on the display, which just means uh, there's no growth. But again, we'll get back to that. Uh, these are just to uh, allow me to search through the um, slot selectors, just so I can see what um, values are, are in the slots and which uh, I want to grab. Um, this uh, IC is controlling the temperature in the room. Or more specifically, it's, it's controlling the temperature of that um, the water, uh, which we'll get to in a second. I should probably put a um, a water monitor here, but because uh, this is the water temperature and this is the atmospheric temperature, uh, but um, I, I should probably get how much water is in the system because it's uh, slowly going up. Anyways, let's get out of here. Oh, I'm, I also have e uh, Elmo Tricks's mod installed. Uh, just because it was installed when I began and I didn't feel like uninstalling it, that won't affect the plants. It shouldn't affect the plants. Uh, but it will affect um, uh, atmosphere and how atmosphere is handled. It's, it's not a very big uh, um, impact on the, on the whole thing. Just makes using the airlock and stuff a little more difficult. Uh, these are my overflow tanks, one for the atmosphere, one for the uh, uh, water. 
And this thing doesn't have filters. I don't know why I did not put filters in. I didn't put filters in. That was dumb of me. And that's probably why the atmosphere wasn't going up. Okay, so the, the beating heart of the entire uh, operation is that um, solid generator uh, that, that it lives in this room pumping out as much carbon dioxide as possible. It also serves to dump heat into the uh, environment. I have a whole lot of these uh, exchangers that seem to be doing nothing. They don't seem to work very properly, and I have... Um, just uh, radiators hooked up uh, everywhere just to try to balance out the, the uh, thermal mass of the entire uh, place as best as possible. I have a switch that switches the generator off and also gives me a display light when it's on or off. And then just a simple um, electrical setup back here. If I need to shut the generator off, I will continue to have electricity. The whole system pulls not very much uh, electricity here. There we go. Uh, we are using about uh, 3.61 uh, kilowatts of power. And that's not a whole lot uh, with how much we're actually doing. Uh, this just pulls out the carbon dioxide, spits everything out. Over here, we're spitting out our oxygen because we don't need it. And uh, I began with oxygen, nitrogen in the room, but I've uh, opted to go towards a mostly carbon setup. Ah, but we're not all the way there yet. There's still a lot of nitrogen uh, in the room, or a little bit of nitrogen in the room that doesn't really matter, and a little bit of oxygen that we're, that we're coughing out. Uh, this over here is our ice... Um, ice generator and that controller right here will also turn in on and off this uh, this ice crusher now there's a, um, a stack of a million ice in there I edited that in because I didn't want to constantly be um, having to feed ice into the system uh, but that could be replaced with a chute and a hopper and, and stuff like that. Uh, it does use a lot of ice. It's already eaten about uh, 4,000 um, things of ice. Uh, but that's also because I had uh, the temperature out of control for a while. But for the most part, that generator is generating the heat to uh, keep the system um, nice and balanced. I could use I could also use the sun, but... I want um, carbon dioxide, so uh, that's where that comes from. There's also a million, uh, a million stack of uh, coal in there, just so I can get a constant flow of carbon dioxide. Uh, these are the heat exchanger packs. It used to be a, a radiator pack, but not anymore. And then this radiator here is just to drag down the temperature of the uh, room, so it'd be easier to stabilize. Uh, through the water and then that's just our our outlet up there and the reason that it's so far out so far up is so that there is no trace gases down here to uh, change anything to uh, interfere with anything now let's go back inside the lab we have these nice um, hydro stations hydroponic stations which are have a nice little secret to them that the uh, Harveys don't have. So let's get some potato seeds. There we go. And we will fill up just uh, one hydroponic station with seeds. And the rest we will throw out. <laughs> now we will get a value up here on our little uh, monitor. Okay. And this is the efficiency that the plant is 
uh, currently functioning. Let's get the plant analyzer. There we go. And we'll see right there that the growth efficiency is uh, 115%. Uh, 1.7. Uh, it's probably not that one. It's that one over there. So that's slot um, one. If we go back over to these to the to the battery the slot the batch slot reader, we will notice that uh, the variable selected is uh, efficiency of slot one or slot two. I don't know which slot is currently programmed in. There's eight slots. And I haven't figured out what the duplicates are for. So there are four slots in, in, the, um, in the setup. Each one is for a plant. All eight over here is for a plant, but we only have four things. So possibly each physical plant, each, each object plant has two objects in it. Now that it is either the two potatoes that show up, or it could be the potato and the seed that shows up, or it could be the potato and the sprout that show up. I am actually not sure. It could also be that one entity is for um, the plant itself and the other entity is for the oxygen producer. Again, I don't know. That will take some looking into or um, actually looking at the code. Now, what this is doing, what this automation is doing, this first simple automation that I've, that, that I've come up with, uh, or that I've uh, subjected the plants to, is um, light pressure only. This is oh, that's the only thing that it's doing, and it works shockingly well. So this IC monitors how efficient the plant is growing, and the minute that the efficiency starts going down, it turns off the light. And it'll keep the light off for, well, I think I set it up for 30 seconds or something like that. After 30 seconds, it'll bring the light back on for five seconds. Uh, specifically, if I get the, uh, the thingy blobber out here. Oh, that's the wrong one. Uh, give me a second. Uh, so, uh, specifically, um, the first you have to understand the uh, the wait loop here, and the wait loop waits uh, ten in-game ticks, which is not five seconds. It's supposed to be two. I think it's supposed to be two ticks per thing, or four ticks per thing uh, per second. It doesn't really work out that way. Um, it's an odd number, but the 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 wait loop waits uh, ten ticks. And then uh, um, I have a 20 second or a 20, a multiple of 20 standoff. So uh, it should be 200 ticks that when the light is off, um, the the thing will wait. The um, the script will wait. Then turn the light back on. Then it'll wait uh, 10 ticks, and then I can get out of here. And after the 10 ticks, it will see if the uh, plant is um, doing better. So it goes through um, a lit cycle where the plant is exposed to light. Once the uh, efficiency starts going down, it turns the light off, waits for uh, 200 some odd ticks, turns the light back on. Then after 10 ticks, checks to see uh, if the plant has resumed growing and its, and its efficiency is starting to go up again. If not, it turns the light back off and it will do that for um, however many times it requires for the, the, the plant to grow. Once it reaches uh, full growth, uh, efficiency stops working. It, doesn't, it won't grow anymore. But I've also found that if you leave it alone, and just continue to continue for it to be allowed to be exposed to sunlight. It'll produce a seed. I might be remembering this incorrectly, but in a hydroponics tray or in a um, not a mobile hydroponics things, but a um, 
the, the hydroponic tray that you get in the beginning, the one with the four spots, the, uh, the dynamic hydroponics tray, you get the seeds first in those two setups. You get the seed, la you mostly get the seed last in this setup. Sometimes it'll pop up first, but mostly it will show up after the, the potatoes have grown. I know I'm stumbling all over myself to trying to explain this. Um, I don't I don't think I've ever seen this in one of my videos before, but I kind of have uh, um, uh, language aphasia, so it's it's kind of difficult for me to, to speak. Uh, I will forget words and I will exchange um, one word for another that that has a similar meaning. Uh, it also makes it difficult for me to understand people when they're speaking to me. It happens less when I'm not thinking about it. Which is probably why it's not an actual thing. It's just probably me tripping over my own head. So let's just sit here and wait for um, this plant to do something. I kind of missed it there, but the um, the light did go off. And if we come down here and we look at the plant once again, um, we have an error message. And uh, these are common. I don't know what's generating these error messages, but it only occurs when I'm using the plant analyzer, so it has to be connected to the uh, plants. But if we come down here and we look at the light stress, light stress is now at 3%. And the 3%... Um, um, is what brought down the growth efficiency. The growth efficiency is still at um, 120%. And if we look, it is sliding down slowly. So well, within the next minute or so, um, the light will come on for a few seconds. And uh, I don't know why this particular plant here has a 1%. Ah, there you go, the lights come on. And it is... It is increasing the efficiency. So um, uh, it, we are pushing the growth quite uh, as hard as I can here. Uh, that is the only one. That is the only one with increased breathing efficiency. Unfortunately, um, it's difficult to mark. Um, uh, look at it. It's just more errors. If we look at the at the errors here, oops. Okay, whatever. Uh, I can't actually bring up the mouse here. Um, this is super common. Again, I don't know if this is the um, the mod uh, add-on that's doing this, or if it's the um, the plants doing this. I think it's the plants because it only happens when I use the uh, the plant analyzer. But um, I wish I could mark and label the seeds and keep them separately, and the um, uh, the fruit, tuber, whatever it, whatever it would be called, uh, the potato, uh, so that I could keep them separate and figure out what's going on here, but that's that's not going to happen. Um, uh, light efficiency is at 121%. Now, you can't keep the light on 24-7. Um, you can't do that. It will become too stressed out and do nothing and it will hurt the plant. Um, I didn't figure out this myself. I saw this on Cows Are Evil's uh, uh, video um, where, he sh where he saw that he wasn't getting any growth um, out of his plants and he had to turn the light off. Um, I didn't specifically make this to try to push it, push the, the growth rate. It's just a natural consequence of uh, me trying to automate the light. Originally, I was trying to automate the lights to the uh, the star, to the sun, because we're in the solar system, uh, by using, there's a, a solar tracker up there. Uh, but I found that that 
wasn't necessary once I found that the that that these hydro stations um, have an efficiency slot on them. So that's what I'm using. Now we'll continue to watch the plant grow, uh, which might be kind of like watching paint dry. But uh, whoops, uh, when you do experiments, you got to have boring parts to the experiment. So um, I'm going back to listening to music and doing other stuff while this thing records. Now it seems like we already have a front runner in the growth rate here. Um, this one seemed to pop up first. And let's take a look at it. And its growth rate is slightly more efficient than the rest of them here. Is that the one being... Yeah, that looks like that's the one that's being monitored, is this one. Just triple check to make sure I'm not looking at the wrong case, and I'm not. So this one is the one that's 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 being catered to. Um, I can um, sample all four of them from the uh, from the uh, the slot reader from the um, the IC, but there's only one light. Um, and if the if Harvey actually uh, sampled that information, it might be. Uh, really useful I could you could cater um, to specific plants but this is the only thing this is the this is the only hydroponics um, set piece that has the ability to tell you um, more information than um, uh, it tells you the most information it's saying things badly again um, Just looking at everything here. 32. Did I not read that right? I think I read light instead of uh, growth efficiency. No, I read the right one. Yeah, so <laughs> uh, this one is pulled out as being a particular, uh, particularly fast growing strain. Now, if this was real life, um, we would inject a marker into this thing, um, like a genetic marker or a um, um, an inert element or something that would be in this plant's cells or DNA or something that could be uh, later very easily I identified, like a, uh, a phosphorescent dye or something like that, something that wouldn't change uh, the plant's growth cycle, but that would be later used as a tag to tell us that this was the plant that we wanted. We'd also be very careful in not mixing up the seeds. Um, we'd put them in the little baggies with labels, but since we can't relabel seeds, at least I don't think we can we can label seeds. Uh, let's try that. Potato. I doubt that we can. Oh, we can! Uh, S1. Well, look at that! Okay, so this seed is now labeled S1. I didn't know we could do this. I just assumed that we couldn't. Okay, we have S1. Now, if I have... Let's say I have S1 and I separate the... Let's put it in half. And we'll throw the other half in the garbage. 
we'll drop this and then we'll take this and then we will uh, just use one of these now we've got one if I pick this up ah crap yeah they all become s1 strain so you can label it now what happens if I how about if I split all of them will they all be the same label now no okay so does it keep the label does it remember what the label is and just mixes the labels up when it's like convenient for it to Now this was the last one I dropped, and it says S1, but the other three do not say S1. So let's pick this one up again, this one and this one. Now they just say they just say seeds. Does this one retain the S label? S1 label? No. Does that one? No. Does this one? No. So the labels are inconsistent, but I wonder if you could paint them. I never tried that. We'll be introducing a tiny bit of pollution in here, but no, nope, you can't paint them. So labeling them is not a consistent uh, thing to do, and you can't paint them. Be nice if you could paint them, because then it'd be like a really uh, really easy way to differentiate, but uh, we are still uh, growing here. Our efficiency is still going up. I can't. There is no setting in the um, uh, the uh, slot reader to tell what part of a growth site, what uh, at what point you are in the growth rate. There are like uh, three or four. Um, uh, values for the uh, the growth setting. I forget exactly what the growth setting is called. It's something. And it's like uh, no growth, negative one. And then you have um, the growth stages. So like a uh, little seedling is one. And then growing is three. Or uh, we have negative one, one, two is, is um, it ramping up and then three is it's ready to harvest but even when it says ready to harvest you can still get stuff out of it if you leave it longer like you'll get one potato right away and then two potatoes shortly afterwards and then if you leave it for a really long time um, you will almost certainly get a seed out of it i can get uh, probably about um, 90 percent yield on seeds uh, just by just by sitting it out but that wasn't always the case. At the beginning of this experiment, where I haven't, I hadn't tuned it in, and I was being um, impatient and, and harvesting them right away. I wasn't getting seeds right away. But when I forgot about it and um, left the game to run by itself and came back, I had like ninety percent of ninety percent of the fruiting plants had seeds. So between two and five minutes, it seems to want to produce seeds. So. Um, Let's just keep going here, and we'll check on the plants uh, periodically as we're growing. I had the, um, the temperature center, sensor out because I'm still concerned that I'm not getting very good uh, temperature balance in this room. I would like it to be completely bonded to the uh, water temperature, but that's, that's not going to happen. So at this point, we already got the full yield. Uh, and this plant is still pulling out ahead. Uh, the other ones are thriving, but they haven't... Okay, this one is a slow poke here. Uh, but this one, I think, popped up first. Now, I'm just going to wait uh, some time and see if it 
Um, if it'll give me a seed. Oops. Damn it. Stop falling off the thing! There we go. Cool. Uh, I'm going to get a seed out first. Because... Nope, that's not seeds. I'm going to get seeds out first. Uh, because it doesn't actually show properly um, when it's got seeds available. So it won't say... And, they, and the tray it does. I think they use the tray to... Um, as the test bed to uh, uh, to optimize their their sub function. Uh, where's the thingy? There it is. So it will either say um, seed or potato. Oh, there is a seed available. Oh no, wait a minute. No, there is not a seed available. Yeah, there's not a seed available yet. So. We will wait and continue to look, uh, and then once seeds are available, uh, we'll come back. So, now we have a seed. Twink. We'll get rid of that seed. And we will pull this one off because this one was the fast one. And we'll put you over here. This one was a very slow one. And it didn't actually produce a seed, so let's stick you over here for now. Uh, and you were the fast one's potatoes, so we'll put you over here. And you guys, we will just, you know, whoops, there we go. So, was this the fast one? Yeah, this was the fast one. So this one wasn't the fast one. We will drop the stuff here. Now we will uh, replant. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. There we go. And we'll replant you. And then just mix the other guys up. If it's got a seed, it planted fast. So we're just put the the seeds down. There. And the light will come on sooner or later. Let's uh, give it a little, little push here. There we go. So we're at about 56 minutes real time where this is, uh, uh, where this is grown to this um, this level. So we started off with four seeds and now we have almost tripled our yield. Um, did I forget one? No I didn't. I just didn't let the seed, uh, the little seedling uh, go. Uh, I didn't let the, the, uh, the, the low fruiting plant spawn a seed and I just planted its, uh, its uh, potato. Uh, now, during that that 55 minutes, I also showed you around the base, so that's 20 minutes. I will probably put something on screen right now that shows the actual um, real-world growth time that this occurred in. Um, 
the lights also came on and off in a in a very irregular pattern to the uh, star. Um, I haven't actually analyzed that. I haven't actually um, um, figured out what the uh, what the cycle is. So I'm going to stop talking for a few seconds, and maybe I will I will edit in afterwards what the cycle was. And maybe I didn't do it because I'm lazy. Now, um, uh, let's look at another aspect of... Uh, let's look at, at how the game actually handles all of this stuff. Okay, so here's the game code here. Or this is the save, not the game code. Um, and in here we will find the plant uh, index... There we go. Here's the here's the plant information. Uh, it's called Gene Wrapper. Um, it also doesn't seem to be very well um, uh, partitioned from one another. It's not very well stabilized from one another. But this is the plant information, and we can see that they're not really genes. They're modifiers. So uh, growth time multiplier. Uh, we have a modif multipl multiplier here. This is this stability thing is basically um, uh, you can have a workbench and you can apply a uh, um, a gene thing to it. I haven't really looked at them yet. Um, that makes it so they're much more variable. The the seedlings will be much more variable. Whatever comes back is much more variable. And we have the amount that it needs to be dark, and the amount that it needs to be light, which is kind of stupid that you would have two different. It says per day, so perhaps they have the growth cycle pegged to um, whatever a day cycle is. Um, now that could be the day cycle multiplier, or it could be the uh, day cycle of the actual um, a map that you're on. I don't know. Uh, it seems weird that they would have um, a, a per day uh, thing here and not just like tolerances and stuff. Uh, they have a, dro a drought tolerance multiplier, water usage multiplier, uh, low pressure pressure multipliers, um, undesired gas, blah 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 blah. This I kind find kind of sad that it's just an intolerance to a certain type of gas and you can't actually mutate your plant to breathe a certain type of gas because in the real world that would occur. You might have a very random collection of genes um, that that mutate out of a, a plant because it's like sitting in, a, in an environment with a lot of chlorine or something. It will, over the course of millions of years, it might develop a use for that chlorine. Uh, gas production, uh, high pressure resistance, suffocation tolerance, uh, which is not the same as low pressure tolerance. This is actually if there, if it is, if there is no uh, atmosphere or or very little atmosphere. So, if you accidentally blow out your base, for instance, um, and have no air uh, in the base, how long it'll take you to pump that up to uh, pressure? Or if you um, suddenly have no carbon dioxide. I'm sure there's uh, modifiers for the uh, um, the um, Wieswort style um, plants, the, the winter spawn things. And then you got temperature tolerance and did I wrap back around? No, I didn't. Why are there two undesirable gas? Oh, resistance. Oh, sorry. And then light tolerance and darkness tolerance. So there's f uh, right now we're experimenting with light. There is four light variables in here, whatever. Um, then we go to another plant, and there is no identifier between the, the the plants. So I think what is occurring here is if you're actually looking at the game, there is no um, there's no, no unique code for these for these multipliers here. For these, uh, for these gene collections here. So what I think occurs is that when you, when you plant a plant, whatever is the first or last 
maybe the last, in these arrays, in these uh, XML, M, XML arrays, um, will pick that to plant. Uh, so if you have a, a bunch in the stack, it will, it, will, it will grab the first or the last one out of the stack, and that's the one that will be uh, planted. So what I would like to see is I would like to see some unique identifiers here so that uh, when you separate plants out or give them names or do stuff to them, it becomes a new object. Um, much like when you're like uh, programming a, uh, a variable, it will, um, uh, like if you, if you reprogram an object in the game, a network object in the game, to like say uh, turbo pump uh, 01, when you go looking for it in the, uh, in the IC, it will be called Turbo Pump 01, and it'll always be called Turbo Pump 01 uh, in the network. This, I'm not sure what these are. Again, uh, it's part of the just the game's um, keeping track of what you've done to the plant. All of this is very straightforward, and it, again, it's not a gene. I would like them to see, I would li have liked to see them using um, hashes or something to be able to track um, how a plant responds. If plants, uh, individual plants, were actual individuals, which they are not, they're just pointers to this, to these, uh, um, uh, to these, uh, these thingies. And uh, uh, there's a lot here that isn't. Um, super uh, transparent in what they're doing. This I haven't seen. Uh, I haven't seen changed. It says aggregation state, and uh, when you aggregate something, you're just basically piling them all together. So like a, a sum of whatever, and. Um, I guess maybe this is would be the how much you've tortured it, but it hasn't changed, so I have no idea what this do what this does. Um, this is fairly constant too, so I could physically change these. Like I can I can change them and reload the save and see what happens, but I don't want to do that at this point. I actually want to. Oh, look at that! There's one here. Where did I just see that? Gas production. There's one here that's actually generating 4% less carbon dioxide than it did before. I wonder if I can actually look... I wonder if I can actually identify that. Uh, i got to make sure that I, I put the, the, the window away, because I often forget to do that. So if I look here, one of these plants has reduced... Uh, carbon dioxide um, so this is 93 percent 93.4 93.4 93.4 that's just gas present that's not its efficiency in doing it so this thing is actually not displaying that Anyways, we weren't going to look at that in, in this uh, introduction to what the hell this stuff does. We were just going to show that um, by manipulating uh, its exposure to light, um, we can uh, greatly increase or uh, decrease its... Um, ooh, look at that one popped up faster. Now, if I were to keep tracking... If I was to keep track of this um, uh, more than I am... I might either write, I, well, I wouldn't might, I would put chips above every single one of these um, these hydroponic stations, and I would monitor every single one of the, uh, the, uh, the slots to see what exactly they were doing and be able to select the one that I want most. Or at the very least, I would sit the bot, I would sit my avatar somewhere where I could see what all the plants were doing and either record it or sit there with a, with a pad and pencil and, uh, you know, mark down which one was, which one fruited first, which one was, 
which one fruited last and uh, when uh, seeds showed up. Now, if they ever get around to uh, making uh, Harvey be able to read um, efficiencies or, or other aspects of the plant, um, then I could probably program the Harveys to identify um, exactly which part of their cycle is in. And I don't think that would be hard. Um, Harvey's got a, a, a thing for happy, sad, and whether or not it's ready for harvest or not. So even at that point, uh, you can code a very simple um, identifier in there that the first one to advance to uh, a state where it can be harvest, harvested, it would then um, uh, be identified you harvest it, you kick it out of the network, and you drop the seed somewhere safe where you can go look at it later and then identify it and label it and, and do different shit with it Label uh, later. Um, there is a tray in the game uh, for uh, seeds. Let's uh, bring that up. Oh, I hope it's called tray. It is called tray. Tray. So uh, this tray, you can... Uh, uh, Identify which seed you're doing what with. So let's go potato. Doop. Uh, will it only put one in there? It'll put the whole thing. No, oh, it only put one in there. So uh, you can have a bunch of these trays that you're carrying around and then, you know, uh, select the different um, select the different seeds that you that you're that you're experimenting with. Now, originally, what I had built this um, this experimental room uh, was temperature. I was I was decided that I wanted to use temperature and put as much um, um, negative temperature pressure on um, uh, potato seeds as I as I could. I would also like to see this being bigger. This tray. I would like to see this tray being like. Maybe three times its size, something like that. So I can actually put like, you know, a lot instead of 12, maybe like 32 or something like that. But these are the these are the hands you're given. Um, I would also like to see uh, an ability to identify which one is ready to produce a seed. Now, it's possible that it produces a seed once it hits a certain threshold of efficiency. I haven't actually uh, worked that out yet, but um, might be able to work everything out based on efficiency. So how many, uh, when the first potato is ready, when the second potato is ready, and then when the seed is ready, and uh, you could calculate that all um, with efficiency. I would like to see an identifier. I would, because it's not hard to see, like in real life, it's not hard to see when a, when a, a plant's fruit is ready and um, if it's actually producing seeds and it'll produce a seed first. In real life a plant will will um, well that's not true because like fruiting trees the fruit will develop it'll be under ripe and then the seed will develop inside the fruit um, but I mean it'll flower and whatever it doesn't matter what real life is this is a game um, so yeah, I don't know where I was going now. <laughs> so yeah, this this very simple code, and uh, I mean, it, it's not a very efficient code. It's just um, uh, I just developed it as needs musted. That is the temperature code. That's not the one I want. Let's pull the uh, let's pull the hydro code. There we go. So. Oops. This is the, the hydro code, so um, it's just, I showed this a minute ago. It's dumb. It's, it's not very, it's not very efficient. And it's also, I'm also programming it in, the, in a language style. Why does this keep pulling up the... Doesn't matter. Uh, so, it's also written in a style that's that's not uh, that's not for this um, the script system uh, the the um, the MIPS programming language, which 
I didn't actually know until I started playing this game. I know I knew assembly. Well, a variation on assembly that's used for um, consumer appliances. Come on, get up on top of there. So, get on top of there. So, I, I guess that'll be it uh, just for this little introduction to this. Um, I think I'm going to go back to uh, temperature, stressing these things out. Um, but I'm going to keep the light, uh, the light stress in. Um, I'm not going to use any modifiers to the uh, 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 to the plants. I'm not going to use any of the the quote unquote genetic tools that they give you um, in game. I am just going to continue on with this. Um, with doing it quote unquote naturally to see how um, how they mutate naturally. So if you're a person that sets up your base with very low oxygen limits, like very low pressure limits, you know, to the, 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 the very lowest that you could actually breathe and are constantly running your base hot or cold, um, and the plants will change based on that and how quickly they will change based on that. I will also try to figure out what, what other parts of the, uh, this, uh, um, uh, what other parts I can figure out? Bleh. Tripping over my tongue.